Some people become concerned because they think the world is ending on a certain date. Like when many people believed that the end of the Mayan calendar on December 21st, 2012 spelled the end of the world. In the year 999, people thought the world was coming to an end. Even some preachers have said that Jesus Christ is coming back on a specific day, like September 11th, 1988, or May 21st, 2011. The Bible does have a lot to say about the end times. Many books of the Bible describe the end of the world, but they don't give us the exact day and hour. Jesus said, No one knows about that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. One day the disciples asked Christ when the end of the world would take place. He gave them several signs that would precede the end of the age. Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Christ and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pangs. When a baby is about to be born, a woman has birth pangs. These pains become more frequent, more intense, and closer together. False messiahs, warfare, famines, and earthquakes have been going on since the beginning of the world, but they will become more frequent and intense. Jesus went on to say that his followers would be persecuted, hated by all nations, and even put to death. Jesus also predicted that many would turn away from the faith and even hate each other and that false prophets would appear and deceive many people. Christ also said that during this time, that because of the increase in wickedness, the love of most people would become cold. Christ also said the gospel would be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end would come. The Apostle Paul in his letters also warned that the last days would see an increase in false teaching, with people abandoning the faith and following deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. Other possible signs of the end include the rebuilding of the Jewish temple in Jerusalem, more hostility towards the nation of Israel, and a movement to a one-world government. One of the most prominent signs of the end times is the re-establishment of the nation of Israel. Numerous prophets have foretold that God would bring the Jews back to Israel. In 1948, Israel was recognized as a sovereign state officially for the first time since 70 AD. God wants people to be wise and discerning, and not interpret any of these as the immediate arrival of the end times. He is giving us information in the Bible so that we can be prepared. Some believe the Bible teaches that Christ will come to take his followers from the earth before this next major event. We don't know that for certain, but we do know that God will either deliver his people or be with them in a special way through the tough times that come on the earth. Around this same time period, a ruler will arise that the Bible terms the Antichrist. At first, he will be friendly with Israel and will sign a peace agreement with Israel for seven years. This will be a time of terrible wars, famines, plagues, and natural disasters. Halfway into the final seven-year period, the Antichrist will break his peace agreement with Israel and turn on the Jews. He will also set himself up in the temple to be worshipped. Horrible plagues, monstrous earthquakes, and famines will ravage the earth. This world leader will launch a final attack against Jerusalem that draws in armies from all over the world. At some point in this vicious battle, Jesus Christ physically returns to destroy this Antichrist. Christ has both the Antichrist and the accompanying false prophet thrown alive into a fiery lake of burning sulfur. Then, for a thousand years, Satan is bound with a chain, and Jesus Christ rules the world from Jerusalem. It is a time of peace and prosperity like the world has never known. At the end of the thousand years, Satan is released. He deceives a number of people and incites an army to invade Jerusalem where Christ is reigning. But fire comes down from heaven and destroys this last rebellious army, and Satan is thrown into the lake of fire, never to be seen again. Then the dead all over the world are raised to life, and every single man and woman is judged before the great white throne of Christ. At this judgment seat of Christ, his followers will be rewarded for good works and faithful service during their time on earth. Some Christians will lose rewards but not eternal life, for lack of service and obedience. Christ then judges all those who have refused him and his forgiveness. Their awful fate is to be cast into fire and darkness, away from God's presence forever. The event that happens next is what people usually mean when they refer to the end of the world. The event will be cataclysmic and loud. Stars and galaxies will be consumed in a tremendous explosion and the earth will be laid bare. 
The last two chapters of the Bible then describe God's grand finale, the new heaven and the new earth, the final dwelling place of all believers. It is a place of grand reunions, amazing discoveries, and unspeakable joy. It will be a place where there will be no more sorrows, sin, or death, and we meet Jesus Christ face to face. You don't want to miss it.